texting was bug number two. So once we found the LNK file, that was like pretty easy. It didn't require any like didn't require that much brain power. So the next one was uh, the, the, uh, of course I didn't know that we fixed LNK. We looked at LNK. We knew it was a bug. We didn't know there were more. So how did we find about the second one? So what happened was I was trying to do some. I was doing some analysis on this bug, and I ran out. Of course, like most normal people, I analyzed malware in Windows XP, uh, and I noticed that on Windows XP. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm being serious. Like, no, most malware is use Windows XP, right? Yes, exactly. Even, I mean, even the VM to people emulate, it's all Windows XP. Uh, so anyways, uh, so I noticed I ran as normal user, and I noticed, crap, dude, they're like rootkits being uh, deployed. It's like, what the hell is going on? And then I, t I told another friend of mine who is uh, working, he works in the Windows team, and he ran, he, and he's a Windows developer, he works on Windows 7. So he ran this on his computer, and he's like, holy crap, man, that happened to me too. What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> So at, at this point, you gotta remember this is like in the this is in the afternoon, right? This is in the afternoon. This is like late in the afternoon. I'm trying like four, like five, six p.m. or something like that. So I'm like, holy shit, man, this is like not good. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but the thing is, like, we knew we knew that uh, the rootkits were being deployed, but we didn't know how the how the rootkits were like dropped, right? Because you need to install the rootkit somehow. We didn't know how that was done. And I, I, I clearly remember, like at the time, I was exchanging an email with a buddy of mine, uh, was uh, Frank Baldwin. I don't know if he's here or not, but I, I, we, we were exchanging some emails about this, and I asked him, "Hey, dude, uh, like well, I'm looking at this crap, and like, do you know like the, how the like the uh, rootkits were deployed, right?" And of course, uh, you know, dude, he lives in Germany, and where I live in the U.S., so our time zone difference, you know, like, is bad. So we didn't get a response. So the following day, of course, we investigated. Um, so we so the, so when we investigated, the way we did it was uh, we did we divide again we divided the task. I did it I did my own thing and Arthur did his own thing. Uh, so what Arthur did was he debugged this live. He, he like he looked at a window bug uh, to export that exe and start tracing it. But as you know, like I said, there's like a mag of code. So you, unless you know what the hell you're doing, you're gonna waste a lot of time, right? So of course that's what Arthur did. He spent a lot of time looking at this assembly and he didn't find shit. So uh, he didn't make much progress. So he, he was like, really stressed out about this. Because again, when we told management, hey, dude, uh, looks like uh, we have like uh, low esc uh, escalation privilege on XP and Win7. What the hell do we do? They, of course, are freaked out, right? So they want results fast. So uh, Arthur, the following morning, what he did was he used a different approach. Instead of doing you know, deep live dynamic analysis, he, did, he used a process monitor and he, uh, he looked at event logs. Uh, being myself, I said, oh, man, this is like a waste of your time. Fucking process monitor is like, you know, not useful for this. Nobody uses this for reverse engineering. I was wrong. Uh, so when, <laughs> yeah, so he looked at the process monitor logs and he found two interesting facts. He found that um, there were scheduled tasks being added, and he also saw that there were uh, files being written. Uh, uh, there, there was an XML file being read from the disk and then rewritten back to the disk. And so what he, he didn't know where, like, so because process monitor like, only tells you what's happening, they don't tell you exactly where in the binary that happens. So basically, what we did was when, uh, we had an internal tool and we were able to figure out, okay, exactly. We set a breakpoint on like create file, and we knew exactly where, uh, where, where in the binary that file was being created, and so on. So once we knew that, once we suspected that had, uh, uh, this had something to do with, ta with scheduled tasks, we added the developers of the uh, you know task scheduler to the to the list. And of course, these people are like mad smart, right? After a few minutes, we told them, you know, here here are the behaviors that we're observing. Uh, we extract the file uh, before, like the XML file before and after, and we told them, here, this is what's going on, here's what we're seeing. Of course, they immediately said, oh, yeah, dude, this probably has to do something with our CRC checksums. <laughs> and uh, of course, you know, at the time I'm reading this, I'm like, no, dude, it's, this can't be. Uh, so it turns out that uh, this is the case. The algorithm, so the way it works is, I'll explain next, but yeah, they use a hash algorithm, and the hash algorithm was CRC32. Uh, so, and then, like, of course, I didn't believe him and stuff, so what I, I looked at the, the Stuxnet binary, and I was like, yep, yeah, you're right. Uh, so the way here is how, here's how it works. Um, on Windows Vista and higher, uh, when you add a, create a scheduled task, uh, it actually stores all the information about the task in, uh, an, X, an, X, in an XML file. And the XML file contains uh, like which user it, uh, the task is supposed to be executed at. So usually it's by you, right? Uh, and uh, the task, task scheduler will check some this XML file, save the checksum in a registry somewhere, and then before it executes, it checks, it hashes the file again, it checks to see if that is the same or not. Because when you create the task, you actually have readable, it's actually readable and writable. So anyway, so that's how they did it. Uh, if the checksum don't match, and you know, obviously some corruption, so we don't execute. But if the same, execute. But of course here, you know, CRC 32 collision is very easy. It takes like you know like five seconds to to generate one, and that's what the Stuxnet author did. Um, 
So the attack plan, here's how it worked. They, they create a task, uh, which makes it run DLL, blah, 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 loads, loads a driver. And then it checksums the file just before, uh, um, the, just before the file gets closed, and it saves a hash. Then it opens up the file again, and it keeps on padding the file until uh, this checksum is the same. And that's boom, that's it. And then they disable the task and run the task again to, stop the, to bypass the caching stuff. And that's pretty much it. And uh, what they did was they changed the current user to local system. So local system is like the highest privilege you, you get, I guess. So they get code running as uh, root. Easy, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's, I mean, this is the reason why, again, this one I didn't have to show you any source code because it'd be worthless. Right? I mean, I used to be like, you know, get CRC checksum. I think that's all the function is called. So anyways, uh, so once we found this out, they're like, oh, okay, again, this is within minutes after we figured this out and confirmed it, uh, okay, some guy proposed to change it. Like, what the fuck? What do we do? Uh, so we said, okay, well, let's, let's do, uh, let's change the naive, uh, so we, let's change the, change the checksum. It's like, okay, instead of using CRC, let's use, uh, like, you know, a stronger crypt, uh, hash algorithm. Uh, so and then the next option, which came from another person, he said, okay, well, how about we change the permission of the task file? Don't only allow read access after the, after the fact. Don't allow write access. So that, you know, that means they can't modify the file. Uh, and then the third option was, okay, we'll store the task somewhere else. Don't put it in an XML file on disk. Or put it somewhere else, only system can read it. Uh, and in the end, you know, there are different advantage, disadvantages and disadvantages for each of these solutions. Like, uh, primarily, a lot of these things are app, uh, backwards app compat issues. Uh, and in the end, uh, option one, uh, one. And so we changed the hash algorithm to SHA-256. And this update was released, I guess, last week. So that's it. So if you diff the fix, you'll see these new calls who like, uses SHA-256. Um, so from the attacker perspective, so what the hell is this used for? Uh, so the LNK was used to get an initial like, foothold on the, on the station, and it checks to see what operating system you're running. And if you're running Windows Vista or higher, it will, use, it will add a, a scheduled task to will run a, a load of file, will run like, you know, a function to a DLL, and then it will drop a rootkit. And again, this is 100% reliable because uh, there's no like, memory corruption. You can't fail, right? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, and the interesting thing is this, this thing only works on Windows Vista and higher. And now, you remember at this time, uh, yeah, it works on Win Win Windows Vista and higher because on Windows XP and lower, the jobs uh, scheduled tasks are not stored in XML; they're stored in a different format. So, anyways, uh, so that's from the uh, that's the task schedule vulnerability. The third one is keyboard layout. So this one is particularly interesting because this one, uh, like I worked on this one. Uh, so you gotta remember that Arthur and I were working on, on this like, concurrently. We were trying to figure out how the hell like are, are drivers being installed. So um, I used a different approach just because of experience, and Arthur used a different. So Arthur used process monitor and a debugger. So what I did was I used Windows XP and IDA, okay? And of course we observed different behavior. And you know he was telling me on, on his computer he saw oh dude I saw like the task schedule DL being loaded. I was like dude no fucking way I don't see that shit happening on mine. So I didn't believe him. Uh, but you know I'm running on Windows. Of course you gotta remember at this point I did not know that uh, you know on Windows XP it triggers uh, a different bug. So I didn't believe him. I told him, I told him, dude, you're full of shit. It's not working. So um, uh, anyways, um, so what was, what was my approach? Uh, anyway, actually, Arthur is um, uh, Arthur's, like, really smart. He, he, he knew that, I mean, he's, he's not hallucinating, so he convinced me. He showed me the logs, and he's like, all right, dude, I believe you, but fuck, how come I don't see this shit on my computer? Uh, of course, at the time, I didn't even think that he was using Windows 7, and I'm using Windows 6. I didn't think about that. Uh, anyway, so what I did was, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's like horrible. Uh, so what I did was I static analyzed the binary starting from like main, and I traced there from there on. Uh, and then after like a few hours, I figure like that we extract uh, there's an unpacked binary and there is some like encrypted uh, files in the, the resource. I extract that, and I, I we start analyzing it uh, statically. So I looked in, the, in this file, and this file, um, let's see. So when I analyze this, you gotta remember this is like a mega code, and I don't. I only have a few hours to look at this stuff. And um, in the beginning, what sucks in the beginning, what sucks and does it loads up this DL hooking so they can load DL in memory right in from disk. So that's like a lot of work. It's like, I don't know, it's probably like over a thousand like lines of assembly to do this crap. And it's like really complicated, I guess. So uh, I started wasting mad time doing this. Of course I didn't get anywhere, and I still couldn't figure out what the fuck, why is my Windows XP being owned? Uh, so, what I, but so I looked at one of the, like the, all the binaries I extracted from uh, the resource section, and one of them 
uh, had uh, like some uh, had strings that had win3k.sys and so on. Uh, and, it was, and I knew from the, 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 the dead listing, I knew they were searching for something inside win3k.sys. But the question? Oh, OK, sorry. Please, um, please save your questions till the end. So yeah, so the logic for this is like kind of complicated. It's like funny, you look at the fl control flow graph. It's like I don't know, like probably hundreds of like uh, basic blocks, and it's like crap. I, 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 knew, I manually went through it. And I knew we were searching for something, but the lo the overall picture didn't, was not very clear to me. So this one, you know, I was uh, this is sus uh, suspicious to me. Again, things to remember at this point: management needed actionable information, so they need to make decision, what, you know, what to do and so on. So they need like. Answers like very fast. Other com well, I'm constantly reminded, you know, other companies are working on this as well. I, mean, I think Symantec even had a blog at this time talking about this stuff. Of course, they haven't found this yet. Um, so, but another thing to remember is, in reality, binary NAS is not like Pokemon training, right? It's like fucking hard sometimes. You don't know what the hell you're looking at, right? It takes time and patience. Uh, so, and people are constantly asking you for answers and blah 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 blah. blah. You know, you can't make up an answer and tell them because that's like bad news. So these, are, so it's like a lot of pressure. Um, thank God, our, my management is like pretty smart. They know that this stuff takes time, but they still want results. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I'm serious. I, sometimes, like some of these, uh, some managers, they think, oh, if you know how to use IDA, then therefore you're a reverse engineer. It's like, dude, like it doesn't work that way. And you try to explain to them, they don't understand. But yeah, thank God, yeah, all, my managers are really smart. So, anyway, so at this point, I'm like hella stressed. So I took this home, and I knew that. I realized that going through the code line by line would be very time consuming, and I wouldn't get the results in time, and somebody might beat me to it. Uh, so it's not going to cut it. So what I did was I used all the facts that I knew from this binary. One, I knew that there was code that was searching for something inside win3k.sys. I knew that there is uh, code that allocates memory using anti virtual allocate memory. And then there's code that loads keyboard layouts. I have no idea what the fuck keyboard layouts are, but I just saw code that was using it. And then Ida failed to disassemble some blob of code, some blob of bytes, I should say. Right? And that was it. Those are, these are the only things I knew. And I, at this point, I had a hunch. I knew that I was getting really close, but I couldn't quite grasp what the hell was going on. At this point, I had a pretty high suspicion that the bug is in win3k.sys. But I didn't know where, because win3k.sys is massive. Right? It could be anywhere. Uh, so my suspicion is like, OK, it's in win3k.sys. That's all I have. So this, you got to remember, it's like pretty late at night, uh, probably around this time, actually. So uh, after like, a lot of stack analysis, I got tired. And uh, so I thought, OK, how the hell do I come up with this, the result so that the following morning I have something to tell the team? So, a whole bunch of, so I went through a, a few thought process. Uh, I thought, OK, well, my first, the first thing that came to mind was, one, hook up a kernel debugger. And I, I tell the debugger to tell me, I tell the debugger to say, hey, dude, notify me when this, root, the, when this driver is installed. And from there on, once the driver is installed, the kernel breaks in, and I see, look at all the stack traces to see if there's anything that's like, suspicious. But again, of course, that doesn't work. It's one way because driving Windows, drivers are loaded in, like, by this uh, system con uh, process context. And like, you won't get much information out of that. So, that won't, so this first uh, like, thought process, I mean, this first thought failed. So it was, next one I thought was, OK, well, that didn't work. So let me uh, use uh, another technique. So I said, OK, this must be a kernel, kernel exploit. Therefore, and exploits tend to crash them from time to time. So because rarely you get 100% reliability, right? So I said, OK, well, the exploit is going to crash one point or another. And if it crashes, I get a blue screen. I get a blue screen, I get a crash dump. From a crash dump, I can like, figure out what's going on. So this is the process that's going in my head. Uh, this made perfect sense to me, but I ran the fucking exploit like 10 times. And it didn't crash at all. And I still get on every single time. It's like, what the fuck, dude? Uh, so, and I thought this is like another logic bug. It's like something I'm missing here, right? So uh, it was like, kind of like discouraging. Uh, so the next one I thought was, OK, well, uh, kernel exploits usually have put shellcode in user land memory and then try to a execute it there. Uh, so um, what I, why don't I ask the debugger, hey, man, uh, when, the debu when the kernel tries to execute some code in user mode, can you like, let me know? Of course, this is wishful thinking, because we don't have this. In, in this this function does not exist. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, so I got like, really like, depressed about this. It's like, holy shit, dude. I, fall, I need to have something the following day, blah, 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 blah. So I got tired, I went and looked at some porn. And uh, so anyways, uh, I'm just kidding. No. So I thought, OK, like I'm like really tired by this point, right? I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, this is like, stressful. And so, uh, so all of the previous experiments failed. So I was like, what the fuck? What am I missing here? I need to rethink this again. 
So, okay, so I thought, okay, which, uh, I have many pieces of the puzzle, but I'm like, uh, I need to figure out, like, w am I missing any other 